Hey guys, Ioki here doing some coaching. We're going to be doing this one a little bit differently. Uh, this is a duo bot lane that plays together all the time by the name of Zelius and Maru Amoriani. Uh, Maru Amoriani is a, a pretty prolific Ash one trick po uh, pony, and Zelius uh, is kind of all over the place, but she likes to play uh, Leona. So we're going to be looking at their gameplay kind of as like a cohesive unit, something kind of different. Um, okay, so right off the bat, I would really recommend that if you guys are going to be playing, uh, going into duo queue over and over and over again, uh, I would really recommend doing the split that I do, where uh, you either ward this and stand here, or one of you, since there's two of you, and you can have like a consistent thing every single game, one of you just stand here and one of you stand here. It's a really nice defensive spread. Um, and if you guys are going to be invading, I'm not seeing a lot of pings like telling the rest of your team to come with you. So two people invading is usually uh, an iffy thing. Uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to get into before we get into the gameplay aspect. I did take a look at your guys' uh, recent builds and runes. The only thing that really stood out to me is that Leona, um, I would really recommend taking one of the, the first stat shard and trading out the scaling CDR for either adaptive force or uh, attack speed. A lot of the high elo players, um, they like one or the other, but I don't see a lot of the high, uh, scaling CDR. Um, I personally like the attack speed, lets you pump out a, one or two more auto attacks when you're trading, but yeah other than that it all looked good oh and um in the third row of the resolve tree in your primary tree i would really recommend um making sure you're you're critically thinking about whether or not you, you should be taking bone plating or second win second win is really good when you're against like a chip damage it's called a champion things like lulu that are going to walk up you know auto q you and then you can regain some of that health back bone plating is much better versus champions like thresh um things that you are going all in either you're going all in or they're going all in so other than that, looks good. So let's see, let's see what you guys do here. This is really, really ballsy doing this with just two of you guys. I'm not seeing. I know that you guys are in comms. I know that you guys are communicating, you know, fluidly, and this might be a good idea if you guys had four people. But if you are going to be doing this, I need you. I'm hoping that you guys are either expressing this to your teammates so they can be ready to back you up, or pinging. More importantly, pinging is what gets a lot of people on board with uh, engage or uh, invades. So we're just dropping the ward, throwing some arrows. That's fine. All right, we are against a Kaisa brand. This should be a one lane for you guys. These are two immobile squishies, which is what Leona really, really excels against. Um, Ash can even actually patch in some of the shady parts of Leona's level one, because Ash, she she can W pretty easily level one, get off some. Uh, Poke damage. Alright, so obviously I'm only watching the one match, so I don't know if you guys do it every game, but uh, you know what, never mind. I, w I was going to go over the fact that like, if, if you guys leave this, they might be doing like a late cheese, it's called, where like if you're against like a Lucian or a Thresh, they could come down here, so this is why I like to have this bush warded every game. I like to have this bush warded, and I stand here and decide if I'm going to invade, and if not, just come over here and leash. But this is fine because we happen to see these guys. We know for a fact they're not cheesing. Ooh, nice taste in emotes. All right. So, Leona is not going to provide much value to you level 1. This is the exact nesting spot she should be having. She should be uh, keeping bush control, making sure they don't ward the bush. Um, I would I would stray away from straying away. <laughs> I would stray away from straying away from you, Leona, Leona this far level 1. Uh, because if you go out here, you're going to be sus more susceptible to poke that doesn't have to um, go around minions. I would, I would be staying close to your Leona. Stay on this side of the... Uh, the bush because not only does that keep them puts Leona between you and them even if she doesn't have her two and she's essentially useless a lot of people don't realize that um, and it also helps you keep bush control so what you're doing over here is you're encouraging to throw down a ward which Leona that's like basically one of her only uses level one is she can auto queue auto a ward it also helps pull the wave over here closer to the the bush so that Leona has safer procs to relic shields so be careful just straying too far over the way that uh, level one when you have a Leona now, that's for Ash level one. Leona for your level one. I would make sure you're minimizing damage that you're being take that you're taking from uh, champs like Brand. 
and definitely, definitely be counting minions and make sure uh, when they get level two. Because what this guy could have been doing all the while um, was coming, w was kiting towards you guys, hit level two, boom, you guys are in an area where you need to flash or you get stunned and die. But now you've got level two. There you go. Th this is good. Good attempt. Just unlucky you missed it. Okay, so don't want to do this. Let's go back. The idea for Leona to go in on brand level 2 is good. The execution was whatever, everybody misses. Honestly, I would even I would probably even be looking at Kaisa, but brand here is fine, he's a little bit further out. So we miss this. The second she misses that, you need to be going this way. Don't be going this way because that you don't have an exit that way. You need to be going this way. Okay, it was good that you knew that you needed to flash there, though. That's good. Warwick shouldn't be getting anything here. Oh. Oh, okay. Kind of sloppy from both sides. Alright, good awareness that you realized uh, Warwick's coming here. Probably wouldn't be taking, uh, throwing my Ignite on there. You know you're, uh, you're not going to be able to stun him out. And there's no way he's going to take three turret shots. Three turret shots is what it would take to, for, to kill him there with an ignite. So he wasn't really even that close to dying. Be a little less liberal with your ignite, especially in a lane like this where you basically have kill potential at all points. Yeah, look at you guys giving each other cannon procs. You're a you're a dream duo bot. Nice dodges. Okay, so I don't know if you're doing it on purpose, but you have actually have like a pretty good chaotic dodge. I like the way that you're kind of walking back and forth, but not literally just back and forth. Because um, as you can see, it's really effective in making people throw out skill shots when they don't know, when they literally don't know like which direction you're going to be going. Yeah, I'm liking your dodges here actually. Um, little little risk you'd be going in when you, you're that low of health. I would have waited for like probably 70 more health or so before going in on that. And then once you're in, you got to realize that you're aftershock. Once you're in there, you're probably not going to die. I mean, remember, they used their Ignite earlier. You're already on top of them. Your Aftershock's going off. And you've got your W. So I guess have a little more faith if you're going to be doing risky plays like that. Have a little more faith um, and stay in there. Because your, your, your Aftershock proc, I don't believe, actually hit him. And Aftershock gives you like a shit ton of survivability on top of your W. On top of having faith in your ADC to heal you. So you actually came out, like it looked pretty bad there for a while, but if you notice, I mean, you came out with 200 health, so. I would have stayed in there. You guys probably, I don't know, you, you, might, you might have been able to kill him with the Aftershock proc. But good ideas, good eyes on the uh, catching brand. So we always want to be, don't obsess over it, but always keep an eye on what's going on in the rest of the map. You know, if you if you look too much into the KDAs of your teammates, it's going to drive you crazy. It's going to depress you. It's going to you know tilt you things like that. But it's good to know that Zed is winning mid. Oh, I just minimized. Oh, what just happened? Oh, of course, Windows has an update for you. No, thank you. All right, apologize about that. I'm gonna have to go back here. Okay. So, stuff like this, this isn't worth getting the vision. You guys aren't planning on staying in lane much longer either due to your guys' health. You should either be shoving the wave or freezing the wave at, at the 50% mark. You shouldn't be walking over here and face checking bushes. Um, because you gotta think about what it is you're actually getting out of this. You're gonna put a ward down, right? And then you're gonna have present, you're, you're gonna have peace of mind um, for the next 30 seconds that you're in lane. When really you could just be standing over here on this side of the map, uh, or even going back at this point.
Okay, this is bad. This, this is we we don't have enough information to go in on this. I would say. Yeah, unfortunately, Mr. Warwick smells blood. Ooh, double fear too. Yeah, I, I would say this is an overstay. This is being a little bit too ambitious on what you're going in on. Oh, you almost got her though. Yeah, the second I saw you go in on that, that that, that felt wrong to me. Uh, so let's let's review. I wouldn't have put this bliss ward down. Honestly, I probably would be going back. Um, I imagine Ash has at least something to buy. Long sword, call something. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I like how much you guys commit to everything, though. One of you, you know, if Leona does go in, you guys are both going in. The power of comms. You did almost get one, but that felt bad. I wouldn't have warded. I probably would have just gone back. The wave was in a def decent spot. I probably wouldn't have even tried to shove it. I, I would have just gone back. But no biggie. You guys are getting capped. See what you guys do with it. Yeah, okay, we got boots call. It's a decent buy. Alright. The beauty of having an Ash Leona lane like this is that this is still a winnable lane. You need one good pick when your ignite is up and when you're at full you're at decent, you know, above half health. Alright, so instantly we know Warwick's this side of the map. Looks like you're thinking about collapsing on him. We know he we now know he's gone back into his jungle. So he is probably clearing. Um I probably wouldn't have wasted my E there. It's just got such a such a long cooldown. We now know he's on this side of the jungle and he's probably injured, so he's probably going back. Uh throwing your E there doesn't really reveal anything. We know the dragon's gone. We know that we're not fighting it. I would be waiting to do my like cross map ease to hit a, as many of these camps as we can because sometimes even if you don't spot the Warwick with your uh, your Ashy, the information that you get from it is just as valuable. Like you know he's not here, 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 here. Okay, he's either in base or he's like ganking top. You know what I mean? So I would be, I would, I would, um, I would think be thinking a little more critically about how I use my ease. Even though like it, it's kind of like the same reason that Leona warded it's just like a, a, a very temporary like five to ten second peace of mind even though you don't need that peace of mind and it could be better used elsewhere wait what happened to her cannon proc she used it on something else Wondering why she doesn't have a cannon proc here. She must have used it on something else. It's not a big deal. It can add up though. If you get if you get into a bad rut of like using all your cannon procs right before a cannon wave, it can add up. All right. So yeah, you want to be shoving this all the way to the turret so it bounces back like immediately. Like, ASAP, you don't want the wave to be uh, freezing here. So, Ash, I would be constantly uh, constantly hitting those. There we go. Okay, the spooky thing is, I don't think Amumu has gotten a single gank off, and it looks like both of your solo laners have no priority. Which means Warwick has just probably been feasting on uh, those scuttles. So we have to expect Warwick to be hitting level 6 way before Mumu does. Uh, I would be pinging this Mumu off. There's probably not going to be anything here for him. You can go in on this and hopefully kill him there. Whether or not Mumu comes I think is totally useless. There you go. There you go. Ignite all in that shit. Hmm. wonder why you guys lost that. It's interesting that you guys lost that. I would have gone in on the same thing. 
All right, well, I guess, I guess the BF sword into the call, I guess, is just doing too much damage. Oof. This is rough. Mumu has, like, no control over his jungle. He now has what is essentially two and a half losing lanes. Wow. That is unlucky. All right, well, at this point, we, uh, we hunker down and we wait for level six. We ping, we ping this Yasuo out. I don't know if he's trolling or if he like really thinks that he should be on this side of the map. But all you can do is like give him a, a, a caution ping or two. Yeah, now we just wait for level six. And uh, even once you're level six, now that we've put two kills on Kaisa, four kills on Kaisa, um, it's going to be pretty rough. You guys are going to have to play your, your CC pretty uh, pretty safely. Uh, Maru, Ash, I, w I would be really careful about at this stage of the game doing anything without your uh, your support. It's kind of like how you're on the other side of the the map for level one, other side of the lane for level one. Um, you need to play it really really safe. Um, when she's going toward like I would even be like trailing her like shadowing her because let's say worst case scenario you always got to be thinking about the worst case scenario let's say she she goes over here and Warwick is surprise ganking you for the 57th time and you know jumps on fierce or you can back her up then and she won't be taking much damage yeah so now you've been completely chunked I would be shoving this wave and getting the hell out of dodge Good news is that Brand's uh, ulti is off the. Oh, okay. So the second we see Kaisa come back into the lane, you need to be going this way. You guys are putting a lot of space between yourselves. Um, I would I would be sticking a little closer together. Um, it, it's a concept of called presence, where if she's in danger, you're there to back her up, which means she's not in danger. And the same thing with you, where if you're in danger, she's there to back you up, which essentially means you're not in danger any longer. Like they can't they can't be walking forward on you like this. Yeah, you spent way too much time up here. This was sketch. It was a good flash. I'm liking I'm liking the micro that I'm seeing from you, but it, it's it's somewhere between the micro and the macro that there's being a little bit of a disconnect. Like you're good at like flashing skill shots and having that awareness and knowing what you want to flash and things like that. Like I haven't seen you b get like straight up like caught out by a surprise thing other than in the bush. Um, but your like second to second decision making needs a little bit fine tuning and a little uh little fine tuning on the understanding of like what Leona is actually providing you in the, in the lane. Cuz even in a lane where Leona does nothing, like you can still manu like let's say you're not doing with this beautiful goddess of a Leona named Zelius. You're not you're a wait you're solo queuing and you get a Leona and she's not a good Leona and she's playing badly and she hasn't gone in on anything. You can still pivot around her. You can still use her as a force in the lane. You can pivot around her and like put her between you and the enemy. You can walk next to her when she's warding. Uh, you know, you can ping for her to stay near you, and if she isn't, just stay near her. You know, do it yourself. That sort of stuff. To an extent, you can, even with a completely useless uh, ally, you can use them. Alrighty. We got boots. We're not quite six yet. Top lane went down. Mumu's still bot side of the map, but um, we've had them shoved in so so frequently. I don't think anything's here for him. All right, so this is sort of, sort of just a standstill. Oh, we do see a we see a Mumu coming up. So you've got two options here. You've got baiting, making them go in, which is dangerous because they're both ranged and they don't really need to physically go in on you to kill you. Uh, they also have a huge lead. So what you want to do is stand on this side of the map. Give them like maneuver yourself where they're pushing themselves against this wall, and you're hoping for a bandage toss. So if both of you came over here and was like poking around the wave, what do you think they're naturally going to do? Like you come over here and you use a volley 
and in order to hide from that volley, where's the only place they can go? On the other side of the wave. It's like a dance. Your uh, your enemy bot laners are always kind of like mirroring. You can you can manipulate them into mirroring themselves into like a dangerous situation. You can get them to pivot into a spot where this Amumu. Oh, it was close. All right. So you decided against going in on it. That's probably a good idea. Mumu doesn't have bandage toss. Uh, he doesn't have flash. He does have ult, but it, it's just not going to work. So this was good of Leona to, to say no to. Because you know if you go in on that, you're not coming back out. Unfortunately, you guys are about to get 2v3'd. Hopefully Mumu ults this. You guys are able to get at least Kai'Sa. There you go. That's a good shutdown. Yeah, that, that's rough. Rough Leona ult E2. Rough Leona E. Alright, let's 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 talk about this a little bit more. Because I feel like what we have here is a failure to communicate. I would say once that happens, call it off. I would say don't force it. I don't even think we've seen Warwick recently. We don't know where he's at. Worst case scenario, he's right here or right here. Um, the gank didn't work. Don't force it. Especially before Leona has her 6. Um, yeah. And I'm assuming she's going to get her 6 off the rest of this wave. So maybe our option here was to just push the wave. You know, get 2 or 3 of these. And uh, get Leona 6. But good on Leona for not going in because it wasn't going to work. I think you guys make the best of a shit situation here. You get the Kai'Sa. I want to see a little bit more movement between autos with you, Leona. Um, I want to see you auto and then, you know, stagger step. A little bit this way if you think she's gonna run for the bush or this way if you think she's gonna run there and then I really think it would have been waiting for your Q I know you're you're probably panicking because you're thinking like the next two spells he's gonna kill you but waiting the you know half second for your Q to be up and then alting him you could have killed this brand you still might actually nope he's gonna get you unfortunate so a lot of mistakes in a very small period of time ultimately call the gank off if the Amuvu misses the bandage that's that's what I would have done good news is even though Kai'Sa has five kills and Bran has one he's now used to stopwatch you guys have a shit ton of CC and she has no life seal so your poke actually can be effective on this Kai'Sa So let's see what you do with that. I still think, I would still submit that you guys can kill her with level 6s. It's the beauty of an Ashley Ona lane, is that it's never really over. Okay, this, let the ward go. It doesn't matter. I want to be going to contest it. Not that you were going to contest it, you're going to put up a ward. Okay, I, I see that now. Okay, so you, you know this is worded. I'm trying to see what you guys are trying to do here. Because your jungler's not, not here. This is this is just a total give of a dragon. Don't don't even Don't even walk over there. Uh, you guys could be getting control of the wave when they do this. What you should have done there is you see their your their bot laners rotating over to dragon? Shove this in. Make them miss CS. What you did instead was waste an equally large amount of time that they did. <laughs> that was really good. That was really good, Leona. Good awareness to know that the brand auto is about to go off. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh man, if you had a little more fire firepower. There you go. There you go. Good stuff. Yeah, okay. So we've talked about a lot, a lot of what you're doing wrong. The instant turn on the Zed was good. Uh, Ash, little questionable that you're getting that into Zed's face because as I remember I talked about earlier, like you need to be aware that Zed is uh, winning lane and that you're going to be playing against the Fed Zed. <laughs> Six kills. This is when that kind of knowledge comes into play. Um, I think a better Zed probably would have killed you without like ever getting caught under turret. So. A little questionable by Ash to be get, 
getting caught there and like risking her life to be putting that little bit of like tick damage that essentially means nothing on Zed. But good turn by Leona. And once more, good presence coming back to healer. Good stuff. Good awareness that the brand is going to uh, explode. Yeah, that's that's totally worth it. You guys, serve, you trade a two v two for uh, two for one on their gank, which allows your hopefully allows your team to get some stuff done on the other side of the map. Okay, cool. We got the rift herald. Okay, so this is a game where I probably I was waiting to see what boots you buy. This is a game I probably should I I would have gone uh, Moby's on, even though it's really tempting to get that Merc treads to survive the Brand and the Kaisa, and even Warwick does AP. I would say once you're once you're uh, face tanking CC, you're probably going to be dying regardless of if you have Merc treads in this game or not. You're either going to be dying or you're going to be surviving. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming they're not going to dump all of their CC and all of their damage on you, especially because a lot of their damage is single target stuff. Things like uh, Zed ulti, Warwick ult, um, yeah. I probably would have gone Moby's. Especially after that demonstration that shows, like, you guys actually can. If you dump your ults correctly and space out your CC, you can still be fighting this. You can still recover this lane. I would have gone for the, uh, the Moby's, which gives you a higher chance of actually being able to fight that stuff. Merc Treads is totally fine though. It's, it's it's honestly just a preference. I personally would have gone Mobies here. Okay, so you need to make a critical decision at this at this juncture. Uh, because if you allow Brand to do what he's about to do, you're going to instantly fall too far behind to do what you want to do. So you need to either give him the space that, he, that is, let him, lets him zone you off and you know, lose the occasional CS, which is fine if you guys both commit to that, or you need to instantly punish him for trying to do this. I don't want to see you guys take half measures where you, you know, you take one combo and then be like, oh, okay, let's not let him do that again. I would instantly be turning on this or, or running away and submitting to the fact that, like, that's how the lane's going to go for a little bit. Good dodge again. Really didn't take too much damage. I really, I really want to point out, I like the way, don't change the way you dodge, Zellius. I like the way that you dodge. It's very, it's very chaotic. It's very, it's, it's unpredictable. Not only does that help you, um, dodge skill shots, it helps them, cre it helps you, like, create an uneasiness where they don't know if you're dodging or actually, like, positioning to go in. Does that make sense? Like, if you're constantly walking back and forth in, like, a really weird, just haphazard way, and then you, a out of nowhere, go in, they're like, oh, shit, I thought she was just, like, you know, predictively dodging. Definitely want to work on the, um, the ease. And I want to I talk about a really important concept here, because you had a really good opportunity to just walk up and queue him, actually. Okay. So, right around here. The wave is thin. You're looking for an engage. Good eye. Look where he is. If you walk over here, you've got him. And they'll do something called dodge themselves to death, where if you don't hold on to your E, it's almost a, a, as valuable as if you literally landed the E. Because they will just continuously dodge, thinking, okay, he's going to throw the E, he's going to throw the E, he's going to throw the E. And, and in that time, you can literally just be closing off space and just queue him, and then all in him. But now, he knows you've got no E. If he's smart, he knows that it's a relatively long cooldown. What are we looking at? It's probably like 12 seconds right now or something. About about 10 and a half seconds. Okay, you still got him though. You still got him. Be sure to, um, once you commit, be sure to be comboing that QR. Alright, so you guys are winning this lane at this point. Despite all, despite all the, uh bad shit that happened in the early game and despite that not even being a good engage if I'm being honest you guys are still winning so that's good to know yeah don't be afraid to literally just walk up and queue him this is just this is just whatever I would have held on to your flash here man there's there's such a small chance of you outplaying that 
Like, it would have been cool and it would have been sick, but there's it's like a 10% chance of you surviving that. It's just not worth it. Hold on to your flash. Alright. The scoreboard looks pretty dire. But the eternal optimist in me is starting to see a couple good things. You guys can you you, you can you've proven you can still 2v2. This is still a winnable game. If we play the board right, this is a winnable game. Alright, be sure to always be trying to put Leona in front of you, between you, especially when you don't have vision of Brand. Um, I think this one's actually a little bit on, on Leona's fault. I think you're playing a little bit too far behind here. I'm guessing it's because you didn't want to take free damage from Brand, but think about how much worse that free damage is going to be on Ash. <laughs> yeah, too far behind back here, way too far behind back here. Okay, okay, okay. Good eye, good eye. There we go, there we go. Drop it. Alright. Good stuff. Really good stuff. There we go, baby. Look at you guys. Oh. I realized things were happening. I started speeding it up. Alright. Wow. Crazy CC, actually. Crazy CC. Beautiful flash out. I love that you flashed out and you're still sticking around. That is the one of the best things I've seen you do all, all game all, all game long, honestly. This level of presence between you guys is great. Okay, she's still going to die. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Learning the concept of presence, even though it kind of fucked you in this one very particular situation. Let's say Zed wasn't a nine kill monstrosity, and uh, let let let's let's talk. Let's walk through a hypothetical. Let's say Zed isn't even bought. Um, you flash out, beautiful flash. You barely survive, but you stick around because presence. Uh, Warwick ults him. You, you you had a great stun on him, and you both live. Like that level of going down with the ship, and like sticking around even if you only have 250 health it's so good it will literally do you wonders in the long run i promise you so i love to see that and it's definitely one of like the complex um it's it's one of the things that separates like for instance like gold players from diamond players it really really is Alright, what we got? So now now we're A Ram in it. That's A Ram in it. Okay, there we go. Good catch, good catch, good catch. Uh-huh. So I've noticed you started putting an auto between your um your alties. I just wanna say, um, it's good in the laning phase. I would be dropping the Q instantly into the R once you reach this phase of the game. Maybe in your first ulti, where you know you know they don't have tenacity and you know the it, it it's important like every auto that you pump out is important because health is so low in in the laning phase and it always comes down to the wire but in moments like this you i feel like you're going to mess yourself up in some of those where you're going to like trying to be squeezing an auto and then they're going to get away instead like for instance if you're playing against like an Ezreal um Actually, let's walk through a few scenarios because when you're when you, I know that that Kaisa doesn't have Merc Treads, but I want you to know something. If you if you engage on someone that has Merc Treads, and let's say you catch a Kaisa with Merc Treads, um, the combo that you're going to use is actually different because of the uh, the built-in tenacity. So what you want to do is let's say you catch them with your E while the E has them rooted. That's when you want to drop the Alt 
because actually if they have merc treads if you go in e q and then r even if you don't put it in auto if you go e q r between the time the q and the r the stun from the q will run out and they'll be able to flash out or if they're playing ezreal you know blink out or if they're playing lucian dash out um, so I just want you to know that I don't know if you knew that or not, but because the proper like the objectively proper combo for uh, going in on someone with Merc treads is E and then you animation cancel as you're like fling flying to them and then you dump the R. But anyways, I would say somewhere around the 15-16 minute stop weaving in autos be before you dump the R. And I'm not I'm not really sure what the hell you're doing over here. This is really bad that you continue to chase you guys got something really really good that happened and instead of like being satisfied with it look how injured you guys are there's no way you're gonna get anything else only death lies over here you guys could be pushing in uh, you can go you could be going to answering bot you could be pushing in mid probably could even be getting this tower but instead you kind of like baited your team over here you get nothing now you die Yeah, now they actually all die. I'm not trying to shame you here, Leona, but this is definitely your fault that any of this happened. Um, so I guess just uh, be happy with uh, taking little victories. Because little victories are actually, when you think about them, big victories. Because instead of you know, getting your entire team slaughtered, you could have gotten a wave of CS, gotten a wave of CS, pushed a tower, taken a tower. They wouldn't be getting all this farm. So th these little these little moments of greed and uh, just not thinking are actually like they have huge huge ripples and ramifications. That's another concept that I think really um, distinguishes like gold players from like diamond players, like understanding the ramifications of like, for instance, in lane taking a really good trade and then not greeting like trying to get the kill off that good trade but understanding that taking a good trade means that like they have to use their potions and now they don't have potions and now if you take another good trade you might even send them back which means you get more cs they get less cs you know you 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 want to you want to take little victories because they eventually ripple into much bigger things okay so we saw this though, right? You want you want to be clearing this out. Every time I'm guessing you came over here for vision control, even without the sweeper, you wanna you wanna duck your head into that, clear that ward out the, out of there. Okay, you gotta be careful. Oh, I was gonna say you gotta be careful because you know he's got Counter Strike. He's gone. He's gone. Don't even uh, waste time chasing him. Good stuff. That was an interesting interaction. Wow, this Lissandra's actually going to survive, isn't she? Oh my gosh, beautiful. Really good awareness there, Ash. You're dead no matter what. Okay, so you got to stop wasting your flash. That's twice now that, like, if you notice, I instantly was like, you're dead. Like, just go down swinging. Don't, don't, don't panic use your flash. There is so, especially if you're playing a champion like Ash, the level of, like, outplay potential is so phenomenal, phenomenally low. Uh, you want to be holding on to your flash, especially because I saw from the early stages of the game, you're good with your flash. You usually, when it's things like brand flashing on you, you're good at reactively flashing that. But sometimes, when you're playing against things like Warwick and Zed, they're literally, they just have to click you. Like, you're not going to outplay that as an Ash. But really good awareness with the arrow and the follow-up. It's unfortunate they have a 12 kill Zed. Okay, I would actually be really careful about what you're doing here, Leona. I think that Zed could uh, do a lot more damage to you than you realize. Yeah, you see what I mean? I mean, Zed greeted for the turret when I'm pretty sure he could have just killed you and walked away. But good stuff. It turned out okay. Alright, so the obvious objective on the map is our tier 1. We've got one tier 1 remaining on the map. 
and you guys aren't doing terribly bad in team fights. Um, objective wise, you guys are pretty far behind. Kill wise, you guys are pretty far behind. I would be saying at this stage of the game, you're probably going to have to rely on your 0 9 0 Yasuo splitting, which sucks because th I can guarantee you he can't kill anyone in the game. Uh, but do you know how much more valuable it is for their team to be missing their level 13 Jax, who has to go. Basi Yasuo is basically a chore at this point. You, he has to go kill him. It's like doing your homework. Uh, but it's so much more valuable for Jax to be answering that split than it is for you to not have a Yasuo at your next team fight. Like, he's he's doing nothing anyways. Okay, just because we know where Warwick is, this that was a safe wave to push. But in a game like this where Warwick's fed and uh, Zed is fed, I'd be really careful about uh, pushing things out like that. It's fine to just let, because you know Kais is going to be put shoving, so. Definitely if we didn't know where Warwick is, that would have been a bad wave to push. Because we knew where Warwick was, and it's just the threat of Zed coming and killing us, it was slightly less of an awful play. Okay. Oof. Man, that Zed is shredding. Give this dragon up. Give this dragon up. Your uh, your engage is like already half health. Doesn't look like you guys are gonna have a, sh a choice here. Ooh, this is gonna be sloppy, man. Who knows though? That you are shredding. Oh my god. Wow. All right, we do see Yasuo. Um, I mean Jax in your top. I assume might be yeah he should be able to kill this brand. There we go baby Yasuo on the board. Oh my god did he pick up four kills there? Dude Yasuo on the board baby. Soul and the dragon for you. Alright so let's talk about what you could have done differently there. Um, once you take the damage once you're down to 50% health I, I, I would have been like making the consensus call to just like give the dragon up it's it's fortunate that you guys didn't do that and they happen to f greed and not just take the dragon and they like overcommitted to you and you want to fight um but yeah pretty sure you still haven't cleared this control ward hopefully you clear it here oh it's a uh, so one of those things. Blue ward. Okay. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Backwards, backwards, backwards. You want to kite backwards. You don't want to go into this. You've got no follow-up. Mumu's already used his bandage. Our ADC's back here. Yeah, if you if you had kited backwards, honestly, Ash would have had like a 50-50 of living there. If you had been able to stun the Warwick off. But I think they get Baron off that. Yeah, they definitely do. Mm. That is going to be an unfortunate turning point of the game. So let's see what you guys do with it. See what you guys do now that they are five kills stronger and they have a Baron. Now is when you really need to be relying on the Yasuo because now, honestly, it doesn't take much for Yasuo to get back into a game. He might be able to outduel one person even though he's two levels below Jax. I don't know, it'd be, it'd be rough, but this is where you definitely want to be relying on split push to just stall out the game. You don't want to be playing by their rules. That's kind of what you guys are doing here. You're kind of like, you're fighting into Baron minions. You're letting Jack split. You're looking for a pick. It's not quite coming. You guys are definitely like playing by their rules. And now that Yasuo is back here, you definitely don't want to be out this far, dude. I'm pretty sure Warwick could like alt onto a Mumu, and they would you, they would still win this fight. Like you guys do not want to be fighting this.
I stand corrected. You guys slaughtered them. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. I can't, I, I mean, I'm not here to coach the enemy team, but I don't know what the hell they did wrong there. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. If you were against higher elo players, that is not a that's n that was not a situation where you wanted to be shoving out. It's something where you wanted to stall out with split and um, stall out Baron. I think they I think the enemy team just has like horrendously bad uh, focus, which is good for you. I guess something that I want to touch up on is the fact that even if something works out in like a low to mid elo game, getting into the habit of like repeating that and being like, oh, it worked last game, so it'll work this time. Things like, uh, you know, pushing out there. Like they misplayed and it turned out okay, good even. Um, you, you slaughtered the fight. I wouldn't get into the habit of like assuming that to continuously work because all that does is entrench you further and further into your own um, kind of like flawed and lower elo mindset that like that's what you should be doing when like almost objectively you should be relying on split and sitting under your turret and waiting out the Baron. So I guess I just wanted to, to touch up on that and be like don't expect as you climb and continue to improve at the game, don't expect your uh, your opponents to continue making the same mistakes. You need to, you know, as they get better and as they make, I just don't want you guys to get too too um, too entrenched in doing these things. Like even this right there is like, it's just really risky. Like you're really far away from anyone that can respond to you. Yeah. Anyways. You do have to, to an extent though, play down to the elo that you're in. You know, if it is working, there is a line where like, you should continue doing that. But just know that, oh, there we go, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful arrow. And you're, and you're kiting backwards, great job. Really, really good stuff, Leona. You, you know you can't peel Jack, so that's just unfortunate. What's ironic is that you guys won the team fight that you shouldn't have been where you you should have been, and that was a really good start. And you guys lost the th that team fight. It's interesting. Oof. All right, so you lose in hip off that. Now. I'm hoping now is when we finally go into stall mode. I don't think they can end this. Can they end this? No, they can't end it. Mummy's up. Should be able to stop him. Yeah. It sucks that this is uh, the dragon that it is. If, th if that was an inferno, it would probably be really nice to go over there and try to bait them into a 5v3, 5v2 fight and kill them. But it's probably not worth it for an air. Alright, so I want to point out something that nobody is guarding the base and you don't really have a, any vision letting you know where Kaisa is. Kaisa could be all the way, you gotta always be thinking about the worst case scenario. Kaisa could be here before you guys see her. Oof. Yeah, I, I, you guys got really, really confident. I liked seeing you guys push out mid and getting the objective. And like I said, like maybe a dragon was on the table, but it doesn't matter because it's a cloud drake. Um, after you get this turret, you need to be going into stall mode. You guys are getting way, way, way too greedy. It's the same thing that Leona did. Remember when you won that team fight in the river and then she went over here and it ended up being really bad and getting her entire team killed? Uh, that's kind of what you guys are doing now. 
Ironically, this previously 090 Yasuo is doing the right thing in backing. Because you just got to be thinking about the worst case scenario. Warwick comes out, fly, or Warwick's dead. But Ash gets caught here. You guys, insta lose your ADC. I mean, e even if, let's say Kaisa wasn't here. Like I said, you guys didn't have vision telling you where Kaisa was. You know she was on the dragon. What if she went, what if she snaked around over here and is now backdooring you as you guys are here with your, getting your back stopped by Bran? Man, this Yasuo is actually keeping you guys in the game. God bless him. God bless this man. This is sad, and this is just nothing you can do. Pulled down their ignite, actually. Wow, we are really panicking, huh? They can't end it. It's the exact. Oh my gosh, he went in really early there. That was really early. They should. He should have done the exact same thing you guys did last time, where you fought on the Nexus. That way you're fighting inside your minions. You have a fountain right here with basically infinite health. Like, mm. Oh well. Unfortunate. Okay, so Amumu, you kind of just made the same mistake that Amumu did. You guys really shouldn't be like looking to like aggressively like kite them back out of the base. You should just be fighting to protect the only thing that matters, which is the Nexus at this point. So Mumu fights way too far away from his fountain and his infinite spawn of minions and the rest of his team. And then you guys kind of do the same thing. Here we go, Yasuo. It's your time to shine, baby. I just love this the the journey this Yasuo took from zero nine zero to like dealing the majority of well between you and at him and Ash he's doing a lot. So this is a stage of the game where this kind of elo is just pretty fiesta e. It's it's anybody's games honestly. It's anybody's game. I would say at this stage, even though they just picked up Baron, I, I would say you guys actually do win team fights at this point. Ash, definitely consider in picking up a, um, a GA, which it looks like you are. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up a little bit between the uh, the song and dance, the back and forth, and I'm just gonna wait till we get to the actual team fight. So they're they're trying to just run, literally run it down through mid with Baron, which is classic. Oh my! Uh, I'm just gonna consider that a, a misclick. I'm gonna assume that was a misclick. Okay, so this is really really bad. Especially after having no ulti. You've got no follow-up. Oh man, you guys are so lucky that missed. Okay, okay, okay. Stun, stun, stun. There we go, there we go, baby. Alright, you guys are winning this. Good stuff. Yep, you got slow on them. Easy. Okay, so Leona, obviously the the alt was a mistake. You fat fingered, whatever. But going into the bush one v three, knowing you don't have an alt, is an even bigger mistake. All right, we run it down here. There you go. There you go. Man, that is a tanky boy. That is one tanky boy. But Ash is literally invincible. She tanked like five terror shots during that. Awesome. Um. 
Yeah, this is this is just kind of like the fiesta, like uncoachable stage of the game. I've pretty much said everything I have to say about this game. I'm just gonna let it finish out. I think you guys are actually going to win, though. All right, I missed that. Let's see what's going on. Okay, good good presence. Like I said, I've been saying this whole time. I love you guys' presence with each other. The second you realize she's taking damage, you go back. Mumu goes in. Oh! Fancy with the Leona all. I saw you. Good stuff. That man wasn't even stunned. I hate trying to peel a Jax's Leona. It is such a nightmare. Oh my god. Oh! Beautiful block! It's not gonna matter though. Good job, good job. I don't know if that was foresight of you like actually realizing that he's going to alter, but getting in front of her and getting between her, that was great. Hey! Leona! I think she's still gonna die. Warwick is so fast with blood trail. Yeah. <gasps> Oh my gosh, so close. Damn. Good plays coming out of Leona there. I like that. Ash, it's a little harder to judge you in this stage of the game because you're basically like... You're, you're, you're full build. You're literally just a stat, stat sponge. Like, unless you're like making a, some serious positioning mistakes, which you aren't, it's really hard to like judge your, you know, second to second micro because you're just like invincible. Until you're not. You either get one shot or you're invincible. It's interesting that she's not coming mid to fight 4v5 and end it. I think that was probably the call here. You guys have 30 seconds of uh, 4v5. Your inhibitor's up. I probably would be spamming, spamping the hell out of Lissandra. Alright, let's see how this game actually ends. And then we'll go over what I think you should take away from this session. It's just going to end with someone getting caught. I mean, that's how these types of games always end. It could be that Warwick. But you want to be careful because Lissandra's trying to go back, though. So, good, good eye on not going in on that. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. That's a decent start. Ooh, man, Lissandra actually channeled her whole back. That is such a bummer. Mumu waited to do that. Oh! My god. Hold on, we're watching that again. We are watching that again. So that sucks. And Mumu entered. Get the stun on him. Holy shit. That is such a beautiful Leona ult. Yeah. Okay. So you slaughtered him. And you win the game. Wow. Okay. So very sloppy game. Um, like, like I said, for the last like five minutes of the game, you know, last like ten minutes, it's just Fiesta shit. It's pretty much uncoachable. Um, but I'm liking your guys' level of presence. I want... Um, I want Leona to be a little happier with taking small victories because uh, you need to understand that they turn into bigger victories. And I think once you start doing them and you start seeing, like, oh, if I take those two kills, that means I can go get this and this and this, and that's even better than what I was trying to do, which is, like, greed for a third kill. I think once you get into the habit of seeing that, like, you'll start realizing, like, how big of an impact on the game that it actually has. Um, Ash, I would like to see you use Leona as an object more in uh, in in uh, in laning phase. You know, pivot around her, use her presence, uh, things like that. But overall, I think you guys play pretty well together. You just need to uh, iron out the kinks, and you guys will be pretty something pretty special out there. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything that I've talked about throughout the session, uh, let me know. You guys know where to find me, and uh, take it easy. Peace.